Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make a colour palette from a, an image. So for instance, if you are doing a research trip and you're finding, you find a photograph or a you've got a tear sheet that you absolutely love the colours of and you want to make that into a colour palette, it's really, 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 really easy. So I'm just going to show you how to do that in a really quick step. So I'm going to go to my finder to find the image that I would like to take my colours from. And so I found this quite nice um, abstract art which I want to use. So I'm just going to click and drag it onto this page. And straight away, as I go into Illustrator, you can see there is a cross going through this artwork. And what that means basically is that the object or the item is embedded, well not embedded, it's still linked to the, um, the location on your finder file. So what happens is if you then take this file and you try to open it on a different machine, i.e. Um, in university or in your workplace, you'll find that you won't be able to open this image correctly. It will say that the image is linked to a file and you won't be able to open it no matter how hard you try. So what you need to do is you need to embed this image and what you're doing basically is embedding the image onto this document and when you save it, it will save onto that document and it will not link back to where the original file is saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select embed and let me go a bit closer so you'll be able to see what happens. So I'm going to click embed and straight away that cross has actually disappeared. Now there's quite a lot of colours here um, and if we look at in our swatches we can see they've got the default colours that normally come in um, Illustrator but we want to have a palette made out of these colours and there's quite a few colours and normally in a colour palette especially in fashion you can get quite big colour palettes but um, what we're going to do is we only want to select 16 colours from this colour palette because in an actual fact if we try to do the whole thing and pick up every single colour you'll find there are loads of colours. You're probably looking at about between 50 to 100 colours and different shades especially if you look around here. So we're going to image trace this, um, we're going to image trace this uh, photograph um, this piece of, piece of art and we're going to, if you go to objects you'll be able to see that we have image trace here and you have make and expand. You can use this way but when you click on this via the menu bar you can't actually change any settings. So straight away when I select my black arrow tool and select my image, if you go to the um, upper lower menu bar at the top or well, we call it an actions bar so anytime you click on these tools you normally get like an actions menu bar at the top here so at the top you can see it says image trace so we're just going to set this to pick up when we trace when we're tracing it we want it to pick up 16 colors so you've got quite a few different options here um, and really there's no wrong or right answer, it depends what you want your outcome to be. So in this sense we want to select 16 colours. So as soon as I select 16 colours, it starts tracing and searching and looking at all the pixels, um, all the similar shades and tries to whittle them down to 16 definite shades. So after that's finished you'll see straight away the image will slightly change, so it's going to boundary refinement and you're just waiting really to that for that wheel of doom I like to call to call it to um, basically finish. So what's going to happen is the image is going to be slightly flattened up. So straight away, smoothing curves. It takes a while. It just it depends on your image, how many colours it is, how complicated it is, etc., etc. So. Sometimes it takes longer than others, you just need to wait for it to finish and straight away you can see the image has slightly changed and what it's done is it's grouped all the shades it has and made 16 definite colours. So the next thing we need to do, because even though I've got this, um, it's been traced, I still can't 
if I get my white arrow tool, I still can't select any of the individual colors. I can get my eyedropper tool and select the colors, but it's going to be quite long-winded if we do that. You can see it's going to be quite long. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this is still selected with the black arrow tool, so make sure you still have that. And you're going to select expand, and basically what that is, it's a converting <coughs> tracing object into paths. So paths and strokes are kind of the same thing. So as soon as I do this, you'll see the image becomes fragmented. And that means now, as before, I couldn't select individual parts. When I select my white arrow tool, I can now do so quite freely, which is great. But that still hasn't made our colors go into our color palette. So what we need to do is, again, make sure that you have selected the image with your black arrow tool. You're going to get your swatches dialog box, and this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to the drop down box, and you're going to select new color group. And we can give it a new color if you want to, a new name should I say, color palette one. We're going to make sure that we have selected artwork ticked and we also need to include swatches for tints. Then we're going to select OK and straight away, as soon as we do that, you will see that the, the colors are now in your, swatches in your swatch box. Okay, so to go a little bit further, what we want to do is we don't want this color palette just to be when we open this um, document. We want to use our color palette for coloring up the rest of our CADs or coloring up the rest of our um, artwork or for our mood board. So we want to save this as a color palette that we can open in any Illustrator document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all the colors that are in here at the moment because I don't really need them. Oh, what's happened here? Let's go back. Go back. Got to make sure that your item is not selected. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to keep the black and the white because it's always good to keep those. I'm going to hold my um, shift key as I select all the colors that I'm not using. And then I'm going to click and drag them into the bin. So all I have left now is the colors, the 16 colors from the color palette, plus the black and white, which you like to keep standard. Now what I'm going to do is going to go to the drop down box on the swatches and I'm going to select save swatch library as AI. And basically what that is, is saving the swatch library as an AI file. So once I select that, it will straight away go to the save and dialog um, windows. And I'm going to save this onto my disk desktop for ease, or you may want to save it onto a USB stick, etc., etc. Um, let me save it on my desktop. So I've called it palette. Oh, get the spelling right. Palette one, and I'm saving it as a swatch file AI. So I'm still leaving that as it is. And I'm just going to go save. And straight away that will save. Now if I open a new document, by just doing command N, I can see here that my color palette that I've just saved is not there. It basically has the default color palette that comes with Illustrator. So in order to open that color palette that I've just saved, I'm going to go to the drop down box here. I'm going to say open swatch library. Now, Illustrator does have their own default libraries here. You can have a look at them when you have the time. But if you go to other libraries, again, I'm going to go back to where I've saved it, which was on the desktop. Going to click on palette one. I'm not going to drag that into Illustrator. It's important that you just click open. As soon as you do that, you can see the color palette has now opened. And I can apply that to any new shape that I want to apply it to by simply drawing a shape and clicking on any of the colors, making sure I have the fill selected. So you can see, there you go, all completed. Thank you.